What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel, y'all. What's up? Y'all already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. And girl, I'm here for it. Like, listen, okay? One of these emails that I'm about to read to y'all is like, girl, did you really just fucking write me that? Like, I didn't even really want to curse in the big beginning of the opening of this video. Like the first 27 seconds, I really didn't want to curse. But the email just like, girl, some people got a nerve, okay? But anyway, we're going to get into that in a few. Hope y'all all having like a really great day. It's your girl A. We came back. Uh, we didn't come back to slay. Well, I'm slaying anyway. I don't really care about what y'all think. But I'm, I'm slaying, okay? I'm here to slay. It's late. It's one. 114 what okay let me see it's 110 damn i have my okay so let me tell y'all real quick now i had to look on my phone for the exact proper time because on my desktop computer i have it 19 minutes fast it says it's 129 okay now mind you it was 10 minutes fast i did not know that i put it to 19 minutes fast you know you know why i have it that ahead of time because when I'm sitting here doing my work, you know what I'm saying, because this is a job, but when I'm sitting here doing my work, you know, at a certain time, I do have to go get my grandkids from school. I pick them up. Now, they don't get out of school until 310, but I like to leave the house at 245. Now, mind you, it takes me one and a half minute to get to the school because it's right here in, you know, the subdivision where I live at. But here's the thing. I don't park in front of the school. I park on a block that's right at the corner of the school. And I like to get my same spot that I've been parking in for the past, like, God knows how long. Forever. Okay? Forever. Even before my grandson was going to school, I was parking there for my other kids. I was there. Okay? So, I noticed that if I leave, like, about 250, I'm still going to get that spot. But sometimes, once in a blue, somebody will be in my spot. I know it's not really my spot, but they should just name it my spot now. April spot because I'm always there. Like the, the neighbors know me. They know I'm always there. Like that's my spot. So I put my, my computer ahead of time. So that way I know I'm leaving quicker though. I do have an alarm on my goddamn phone and I, I leave at actually two 45. I don't like, I really put my, my clock ahead. So that way I don't be late for shit, but I, girl, I'll be late for shit. I don't even know why I do that. They, you know, they say black people is always late for something. And I'll be, I, I don't be late, late, but girl, I'll be like two, three, four, five minutes late. Sometimes I'm running out the door late. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's why it's, I didn't know it was 19 minutes ahead though. Girl, I'm gonna have to fix that. Okay. I'm gonna have to fix that. But what's up y'all? It's late. Like y'all know I'm up. Oh, look, I'm be early. I'm early with my videos. Like at one, almost at 110, because this say 131 now. So at 113, I'll be in the middle of editing. You know what I'm saying? Almost, maybe almost done. Maybe, maybe not. Depending on how long I got to do. Girl, listen, I don't know. But I am late today of doing real talk. You know, I have business to attend to. I had things to do. I had to go to the post office. I had to mail out some products that, you know, was on my website that are available for sale, like wigs and new bracelets that I posted up on there. Wigs are still available and there are brand new bracelets up there. Okay. And then we went to office depot to fax over some paperwork. Then we went to, we went to a couple places, me and Tati. Funny thing, we was dressed alike, not on purpose, but we was dressed alike. Like we both had on a pink tank top like this. Um, hers was a little bit darker. We had the exact same gray shorts on that we love so much from Walmart. Like I think I have about... 10 pair of these shorts. I got them in gray. I got, I got probably like four pair of gray ones, five pair of black ones. I mean, well, maybe like three pair of black ones. Um, and some other colors too. I love them. They are Bermuda shorts. They are girl. I love these shorts. They were $5. Now they're eight, but Tati loves them too. She has them too. So we left the house kind of like dressed the same, you know what I'm saying? Same exact gray shorts, same pink top, like girl, listen, but we went to a couple places. We went to Sprouts. Y'all know Sprouts. Y'all have a Sprouts in your, in your town. You know that bougie, I call it a bougie um, grocery store, but Sprouts, the grocery store where there's not really a lot of groceries. Like if you really want to do some grocery shopping, honey, you're not going to be able to do it there. But let me tell y'all, they do have some really good health food. I don't go there to the grocery shop though. I don't really go there that much, but we went there today because they had mussels that Tati wanted some mussels. She loves mussels. And I heard before that they make really good deli sandwiches. So I got me a deli sandwich that I'm going to be eating after this. Cause y'all know every time that I'm doing real talk, I'm always complaining that I'm hungry. Plus I got me some cherries. I didn't get the cherries from sprouts girl. No, but I got me a bowl. Fries. Kroger's has them on sale for $1.49 a pound. If you use the digital app. And let me tell y'all, I did use the digital app, but their digital apps are so tricky because 
you it'll be on sale already but if you use the digital app the digital coupon excuse me you'll get additional off but with the digital coupon you get to use it up to five times but your ass better use it five times at that moment because you're not gonna be able to come back the next day and say well i'm gonna get two more because i bought two yesterday now nah, it don't work like that you gotta buy five that day okay so when i went there the other day i bought two bags not knowing and not even thinking that you're gonna do that on your fruit produce Girl, when I went back the day after I had already bought two bags of cherries, they were six dollars a pound. When I tell you that I was like to the to the to, I had to say something to the manager because they didn't even have the sign right there. It was just like this huge billboard sign of a dollar forty nine for the cherries. But you did and, and there was another sign that was this big on the side that you couldn't even find it, like saying, This is you better use this five times today. I said, I never knew y'all did that for the produce. I thought it was just for other foods. I never knew that you would expect a customer to buy five bags of cherries or five watermelons on that same day. She said, yeah, that's how all the digital. I'm like, you know, fruit goes bad. But, you know, she gave it to me for that price because, girl, for two bags of cherries, they were $30. Like, who the fuck is paying $30 for two bags of cherries? Like, seriously. Tati went and got me some cherries last night. She used her own Kroger's app and a digital coupon. She got me four bags because I'm like, I love cherries, okay? I, I'm telling you, when the summertime hits, I am Oh man, I'm at the store getting these. Like it ain't nobody. Like they going out of style. But I will tell you, Walmart, their their cherries are way better than Kroger brand cherries. They're sweeter and they're plumper. Like seriously. But six dollars a pound for cherries is is ridiculous. But I'll take them for a dollar forty nine. And I and look, I'll get them four or five bags. And she got me just that much. And I'll eat them up. Them shits will probably be going to like three days, three or four days, because I will eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and nothing else. That's what I had for dinner last night with some cherries. And let me tell you this, you guys. This is a TMI, but. The bowl, I, I had the same bowl. Of course, I washed it out. And it was filled to the top. When I tell you 4.30 hit in the morning and my stomach was jacked up, yeah, you eat that much fruit, it'll do it to you all the time. I tell you, my stomach was jacked up. But I, you know what I said? Well, if I'm going to lose some weight, I guess that's the way I'm going to do it, okay? At least I'm eating some fruit. I love cherries. Love cherries. So I got that. I got me a good old sandwich from Sprouts, which has um, turkey on sourdough bread, lettuce, mayo, avocado, bacon. I added some bacon for extra $2 and some cheddar cheese. So this is what I'm going to eat when I'm done fucking with y'all, okay? But anyway, I hope y'all all have like, a really great day. Yesterday was Sunday and I had a, a really good weekend. You know, me and my little granddaughter, we'd be hanging out, chilling because, you know, my daughter, she works overnight. So um, her schedule changed. So she works Friday nights. She used to have Friday nights off. Friday nights and Saturday nights she used to have off. So being that she comes home like five in the morning on Saturdays, I go downstairs, you know, get Tato. And we hang out. You know what I'm saying? We be hanging out. She be real good with me. As long as you give her a little phone, she'd be on YouTube Kids. She kill, She cool. She cool. She like to sit and chit-chat with me. She is a yapper. She's definitely a yapper. So we we did that. We watched TV. We did laundry. We hung out. We made bracelets. Um, watched Girl. I am I'm I watched my favorite series over again. Um, well, it's called From. If you guys have like it's on MGM app, it's called From. From. F R O M from this. There's so far two seasons. The third season will be out this fall. Absolutely love the series. I watched it when it first came out, which was two years ago, and I forgot about it. So I just started watching season two. I finished watching it. I think I've watched it like three times within a week already. It's a really good series. It's ten episodes. It's I love science fiction. That's all I can tell you. I love science fiction. And these people, I'm just long story short, they get caught somewhere. It's stuck. They are driving. Each person comes from a different point. You know what I'm saying? And each person gets stopped by a tree in the road, and they never could leave this town. But once the sun hits, your ass better be inside and you better have one of these called talismans, like this rock that they put on a door where these, these creatures that look just like you and I can knock it in. Now, I'm thinking that these are vampires. I'm not really sure, but it's called From. So if you have MGM, you can get it on an Amazon Prime app if you have like Amazon TV or MGM. It's a really good series. It's called From. And it has one of my favorite actors in it. I really don't know his first name, but he played in several things that I love to watch. It was a TV series called Lost. I liked watching that. His name was Michael Black Eye. Uh, this HBO TV series called Oz. He was the black guy with the wheelchair, you know. He was also in The Matrix, black guy. Really good actor. I don't remember his name, but he's in the series, okay? So if you need something new to watch, watch from. It's really good. Like I said, the third season is going to come on in the fall, okay? Just to put that out there. So we did that. We made new bracelets. And on Friday, I think it was Friday, I believe, I posted all of my newest items on my website, for bracelets and such so i'm gonna we're gonna talk about that in a minute because girl listen if we gonna promote today's promo today's sponsor 
Today's sponsor video is by no other than me. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that out there first. But also, I did want to say a huge shout out and thank you to one of my subscribers. Her name is Lashika. Lashika. And she is an author. Okay, Lashika Hollingsworth. She is an author, Nobody's Burden. And she sent me this book and a bookmark, okay, in my post office box. Now, she also wrote me a really sweet note. And I was I, I was I was very happy to read this this note because she must have been reading my mind, okay? Because I was looking on Amazon actually recently for some books to read. And remember, I was telling you guys I love to color at night, or I like to use my phone to do this word game. I don't really play too many different games on my phone, but I like to read and I like to color. And I know a lot of people do like to do like the ebooks where you could just read it off your phone. I'm more like a person where I like the book to be in my hand. Um, the phone does bother my eyes after a certain hour. It makes things look blurry and it also makes me tired. So I prefer the book in my hand. I just really like a good book in my hand. You know, as, as long as you read, it doesn't matter how you do it. But for me, it was a book. And she does um she does books. So she, this one's called Nobody's Burden and it's available on I do believe Amazon, she said. And she's a, yes, it's available at on Amazon and at Barnes and Nobles. Definitely link it below, but I'm going to read you the back so in case you guys are interested you can check it out. Now, I'm not really sure she has other books, but this one I did read the first couple pages and very interesting, but it also grabbed my attention and I like a book that grabs my attention. So this one here is called Nobody's Burden and I'm just going to read it to you real quick. I'm going to read you the back so that way if you're interested, you can take a look at it and I'll definitely remember if so to link it below. But like I said, her name is Lashika Hollingsworth and Nobody's Burden, Christian romance novel that takes place in the early 2000s in Shreveport, Louisiana. Two friends that graduated from an historically black university are working through their many past issues of verbal, sexual, physical abuse in their childhood. Both young career-driven women are in hopes to marry the men of their dreams. Book description. Sheila Thompson, a registered nurse that loves and wants to be loved, but her shame causes her to hate how she physically looks. Sheila's true love is Gerald Thompson, who she isn't sure that their relationship will last. While her dear friend, Sergeant Drea Parker, can't seem to stop thinking of herself being abused as a child, and she can't believe that she is falling in love with Paul Gomez. After her and pain, after her and pain, will these two college friends finally have it all? God and some past angelic family will help these ladies get to the next level in their lives. Lashika Hollingsworth is an inspirational writer from Houston, Texas, who has published two Christian-based novels. She has a master's of public administration from Walden University and a bachelor's in criminal justice from Wiley College. She's a proud member of Sigma Gamma uh, Raw Sorority incorporated okay so she does have two books and this one it started off really well um i only was able to read like first 10 minutes and then girl i felt i started getting really heavy at the eyes but i do love a good book and i want to thank you look uh lashika if you are watching this i want to thank you for this book and i will definitely leave your information down below nobody's burden i will link it so that way you guys can check it out if you're in need of a good book and if you're one of those people that's like i don't want to read all those pages it has actually 100 and let's see 107 pages okay so you don't have to be reading forever um but you know what sometimes when those pages are thick like that girl when i tell you i will read a big thick book in like three days when you can't put it down girl when you can't put it down that's what i'm talking about so she also sent me a really nice bookmark because you know what if i don't have a bookmark i will just fold the pages that's what i do but yes i will link her information down below so i thank you lashika for this book right here if you're interested it's called nobody's burden these are christian romances so if you like and interested in things of that nature then you can definitely check her out and barnes and nobles and on amazon okay girl so yes so like i was saying today's sponsor for today's video okay well well, it was it was Lashika too okay but you know what I'm always sponsoring I'm always promoting other people's business and I don't really promote mine that much only because I really don't like to oversaturate you guys with with my business promotions of my own business I don't don't I don't know why I feel like oh I'm not gonna post today because I already posted something today this is me in a nutshell like I will post one time on Instagram during the day I won't post like several times I just don't I don't know why I'm, I'm like well they already see me once I'm not gonna do that that's I've always been like like that but you know what i started thinking last night 
I don't know if it was the weed that made me start thinking this, but I was like, fuck that. I'm going to oversaturate motherfuckers. If they don't like it, they could just keep scrolling like everybody else do. Because how are you supposed to get your business out there? So today's sponsor video is by Made by Muff Accessories, which is available at gonewiththewindwigs.webly.com. All of the links will be provided for you down below for this amazing website where they do feature video posted units of wigs, lace front wigs, which means video posted means a review wig, which was only worn for wig review purposes only. And they also do have custom handcrafted bracelets like such so y'all look okay I got this big ass bag right here of bracelets that I finished 40 bracelets okay when I tell you finish like I made these over the weeks okay the weekends this is my hobby now when I tell you this is my hobby this is my hobby okay I am a very arts and crafty type of person however I love making things and sitting still so as I was stating I have many bracelets available and we're gonna go right into the website so that way I can show you these are now sets of five and six there are too many sets of 12 tens left anymore but as they are some sets of tens they are discounted prices so if there's anything on the website that you see please note that these bracelets are stretchable they are very stretchable they will stretch over within time and they are stretchable so if your wrist is bigger you're definitely going to be able to wear one of the bracelets they come in many different styles from blinged out to plain to many different ones that have many different charms such as this one right here that has about four charms on each bracelet okay I also do have ones that say I love mom colorful ones very very luxurious ones luxury ones which are those that have brands such as Chanel Gucci Louis Vuitton charms and such as well as rhinestone and um, paved rhinestone and rondelle crystals okay so I will link these um, I will link this website down below so that way you guys can check it out this is by made by muff accessories and it's on the website called going with the wind wigs .com. period okay I'm gonna promote my own shit like yeah girl why not okay because I'm always promoting other people's stuff and I think I make a pretty damn good bracelets all right yes I used to make earrings and people used to buy those from me all the time too but look at these bracelets they stretch okay and they're very well made they're not coming apart unless you want to cut them apart but rondelle crystals very nice charms okay blinged out baby this is a whole set of four right here well a set of five excuse me what more can you ask for we got Gucci Louis Vuitton okay and a Chanel all right so these do come in many different styles and they are available where by muff accessories on going with the wind wigs that webly okay I am a listen over here we are a one woman band I do everything for myself packaging making things sending them out shipping them out I do it all going to the post office I do it all and that's what it is but seriously though this is a hobby for me um, I do know that a lot of people like to make different things and it's a hobby and when you can have a you can have a hobby that you really like and do something that you really really like and then you can make a business out of it that's great you know I used to make wigs all the time and I still do like making wigs because I like to sit there and be able to sew so these these are the things that I like to do it just you know I'm not really one of those who like to hang out a lot I love a good hobby so yes it is made by muff accessories girl so on that note we're gonna jump right into this real talk if you have a real talk that you want me to talk about, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com or aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. You can also put a title to it like many people have done. That way, when I do look up the emails for real talk, I'll be able to find them easier. Also, if you want to change the names of those who you are talking about in the email, you can go ahead and let me know so, or you can just leave them as is. It's up to you, girl, okay? So on that note, girl, let's get into this real talk, okay? Okay, so remember in the beginning of the video, I did tell you um, this email that I'm going to read to y'all is like, girl, what? 
Like you done took it a little bit far. And you know what? I'm going to read two today. And I said, I'm going to read this one first because I really, really want y'all to hear this. Okay. Like sometimes it'd be the audacity of people that just be a little bit like some people have a lot of fucking audacity. Like you got a nerve, girl. You have a motherfucking nerve. Hi, April. How are you today? You can use my name, which is Lanice Johnson. You can call me Miss Johnson. Excuse me. You can call me Miss Johnson as I am a school teacher and I prefer to be called as such. I am a 40 year old woman who teaches high school students in the state of Ohio. April, I have seen so many different changes in my life within women. And quite frankly, I am so over all this hat hair wearing fake body toting nasty attitude going around. It's sad because these women who wear these wigs and have their bodies done and loads and load on the makeup with tight clothing have peas for brains and honestly have nothing to bring to the table nor offer their teenage children. Like I said, I have been teaching for seems like forever and these young girls are not getting any better. They come to school wearing wigs, tons of makeup and skimpy clothing. Let's not forget the long nails they glue onto their fingers. Whenever I see this, I already know it's going to be a problem. Now, April, I do not wear wigs. I am a weave wearer. I am very easy on the makeup. I don't wear tons of it. What I am trying to figure out is what makes these hair hat wearers, long nail toting, makeup overloaded women think their behavior is acceptable in this world. They are all starting to seem like nothing but airheads from the constant validation. They seem to all need their lack of what? Hold on. They are all starting to seem like nothing but airheads from the constant validation they seem to all need to their lack of knowledge of men and dating to how they behave in front of their children. When I say they don't know how to behave in front of their own children, you can tell by the way their particular child comes into my classroom and behaves. I am so beyond over teaching these teenagers that I am ready to quit my job. I get the parents who respond back to me with major attitude when I contact them regarding their child's curriculum. It's as if they feel their daughter or son is entitled to receive good grades for very little effort in work. When I meet these parents in person face to face, I then see why their child is behaving and giving the very minimum. And this is due to their mothers wearing wigs and makeup and nails and body done up. It seems that every woman I have come encounter with that wears wigs or nails or overload of makeup or bodies done seem to have a major dysfunctional attitude and is very ratchet and ghetto. And not even always encounter, but even from social media and television, I get that same feedback. My question is, why is that? I ask you because you wear wigs, you wear makeup, and as far as your body, I am not sure if it is done or not. But because you are a wig guru, I felt the need to ask you, why do women who wear wigs have to be so unruly, uneducated, ratchet, and just a lot to deal with? Why, Miss Johnson? Now, what was her name again? Because she said... <laughs> She said that um, I can call her Miss Johnson, but her name is Lanice Johnson. And I'm going to fucking address you as Lanice. Because first of all, you 40, bitch, I'm 50. Okay. And if anybody going to be calling anybody Miss, and you're going to be calling me Miss April. Fuck all of that bullshit. Okay. Now, for one thing, I am a wig wearer. But one thing we're not going to do is sit up here and uh, what is the right word for it? We're just not going to talk about people that wear wigs and wear fingernails and wear makeup and or, or, and, and, and none of that shit get their body done. We're not going to categorize all of those people as being ratchet and unruly and uneducated, okay? That's what we're not going to do. And what we're not going to motherfucking do is call it a hair hat. A hair hat. We're not going to do that. We're not motherfucking going to do that, okay? What's sad, Lanice, is the fact that maybe the people that you met is ratchet, but... There is other populations of people that wear wigs, get their nails done, get their body done, and wear makeup and don't act like that. Maybe it's just the people that you met. Maybe it's the people in Ohio. Maybe it's the people in your surrounding area, okay? Maybe it's maybe it's that, all right? But what we're not going to do is we're not going to write me no motherfucking email asking me why do women that wear wigs ratchet, okay? Why? 
Because she did say that it ain't even just the ones that she meet face to face. It's the ones on TV. First of all, it's TV. That's motherfucking TV. Okay. And it's social media. That's what you see on social media. I guarantee you that some people that act ratchet or social media is just cloud chasing. And they might not even act like that in real life. But what we're not going to do is we're not going to write Miss April a motherfucking email talking about why do the women who wear wigs and weaves and all of this bullshit. Oh, excuse me. Not weaves. Wigs and nails act ratchet. Now, Miss Johnson, Miss Lanise Johnson, <laughs> she's not a wig wearer. She's a weave wearer. And I guess that's even better, right? That don't make a, a motherfucking difference. Bitch, let me tell you this. And I'm gonna call you that because that's what the fuck I feel like calling you right now, okay? Because this email to me was really kind of disrespectful. And if you don't think it's disrespectful, then girl, you must have your weave fucking too tight. The motherfucking um, stitches must be too tight. They must have went through your skin because wearing a wig and wearing a weave is no different. And if you didn't think your email was disrespectful, it was, okay? And if you're a teacher and you wrote me this, let me correct you. Your grammar, there's no commas. Okay. I had to stop reading and look. Yeah. You best, what subject do you motherfucking teach? I hope it's a gym. I hope it's gym because from the looks of the way you're writing, it should be gym. Or are you the lunch lady? What, what, what? Are you teaching nutrition? Are you the lunch lady, the cafeteria lady? Which one? The, the, the phys ed teacher? What, which one is it? Because from the looks of your email, seems like you're a little bit uneducated too, okay? Now, I'm not sitting here saying I'm the best with grammar and writing because I'm not, but I'm just saying since you are so smart and know so much and you educate people, then I would think that your email to me was a little bit more, would have been a little bit more, what's the right word for it? Proper, okay? Now, mind you, you 40 years old. You're 40 years old. You're teaching teenagers. We don't know what you're teaching them, but you seem like you have a nasty ass attitude. Not only do you have a nasty ass attitude, seems like you motherfucking hating. Okay? Seems like you motherfucking hating. And I say you hating because you categorizing every woman that wears wigs, a fucking hat, hat, a hat hair, hat hair, hair hat wearer, a hair hat wearer, and just uneducated. And I don't really know, are you trying to say that I'm uneducated? Because she did say in this video, um, excuse me, this video, she did say in this email, my question is, why is that? I ask you because you wear wigs, you wear makeup, and as far as your body, I'm not sure if it is done, but but because you are a wig guru. First of all, you must not really watch me, because if you did, you would watch my motherfucking try-ons, and you would see my body is not done, okay? I have a nice, plump, plus-size body, and that's what the fuck it is. And second of all, I do wear makeup, and I do wear wigs. Don't mean I'm not educated, okay? Don't mean I'm ratchet neither. Don't mean I'm motherfucking stupid. Don't mean that I'm unworthy. Don't mean I can't bring nothing to the motherfucking table, because my table is plenty full, okay? And and better yet, how about this one for you? My table is so fucking full, I don't need nobody else to bring shit to the table for me. Period. Okay? Because I got myself. All right? Okay? I got my table full. Thanks to me, my table is real full. So I'm not really sure what you know about wig wearers, hat hair wearers, or whatever the fuck you call them. But your weave must be stitched too tight. Maybe you need to loosen that shit, honey. Because you're no different and no better because you work in a school. Ain't y'all underpaid teachers? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna about. I'm. I'm. I'm not really gonna answer this question. I'm not really going to dive too much into her email and answering her questions of why women who wear wigs are ratchet. But I just really think that a lot of times when women like this write to me, it feels like they are missing something in their lives. Now you talk about validation that these women always seem to need validation, but it seems more or less to me that Lanice is needing the validation because she's needing the validation to feel like she's smarter than everybody else. As she's stating, she's a teacher. She's tired of working. She's tired of teaching these young kids because they do very minimum work. And when she's in touch with their parents, they teach or they speak to her as if they are ghetto and ratchet and uneducated. And my thing is this, when you're tired of any particular thing, then get rid of it. If you're tired of your job, you quit. Don't write me with no sad stories because you're tired of working at your job. Don't try to put everybody else down who wear wigs, who wear makeup, who wear tight clothing, who wear their fingernails done. You don't do that. If this is what you're seeing, then maybe you need to change that. If you're seeing this on TV, maybe you need to change the channel, change what you're watching. If you're seeing this on social media, then maybe you need to stop being on social media. And if you are so tired of teaching, then maybe, baby, you need to stop teaching. That's just how it works in this world. But it's one thing for me, like, listen, I don't maybe don't agree with a lot of things that people do in this world. And that's fine because it's not my business. You know what I'm saying? If it makes you happy and you are not interfering in my life in any type of way, then I don't really feel the need to talk about it. I don't really need to feel the need to be insulted or offended by it. That's like, okay, so let's, I'm going to just say, use this for example. If I was out and about and a, a woman walked past me and she was butt ass naked. 
I'm not going to feel offended because that's her walking by me half ass, butt ass naked. And she ain't doing nothing in my life to ruin it. I ain't going to get mad. I ain't, I ain't going to get mad and start cussing her out. I ain't going to get mad and feel offended. I ain't going to get mad and start talking shit about her because for what? That That's what you're doing. If that's what you're doing, that's what you're doing. And I mean, I could say that and then I can't say that. I mean, because she's butt naked. But I mean, there are things like we all have an opinion about something. That's just like when we write comments on other people's videos. We have an opinion about that. And there are some people that I see on YouTube that I don't like. And there are some people that I see on YouTube that I love. There are reactors that watch people that on YouTube that I really don't dig. And I watch the reactors and I comment because I do see things that are really, really not appropriate. You know what I'm saying? Or it's just questionable. But that's my opinion. However... I don't say all fucking people on YouTube are like this one particular person. So you can't say the same thing about wig wearers. There are people that wear wigs that are very humble, that are very well educated, that are very nice, that are very smart, that are not ghetto, that are not ratchet. Okay. Let's just think about that because we have many, many women. Michelle Obama, she wore a wig. Okay. Is she uneducated? No. There are many women out here. Oprah Winfrey, she wear wigs. She uneducated? No. She's not ratchet? No. So maybe it's just who Lanice is seeing. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's who you, the company that you keep. Girl, listen. There goes right there. That's the answer. It's the company that you keep or it's the TV that you're watching. What are you looking at? If you're seeing ratchet shit on your social media feed, that's because you be watching ratchet shit. That, whatever you watch shows up and it starts to, you know what I'm saying, populate in your feed. And I noticed that. I realized that because I like to look at animals a lot. I love dogs. I love dogs. You know, I love my dog. And so I like to watch rescue animals. I love when they rescue an animal from the shelter or from the street. So when you write, when you watch stuff like that and you comment, it starts to populate. That's what starts to populate in your social media feed. So I don't really see a lot of girls twerking on my social media. I don't see a lot of that. I see a lot of animals, a lot of homeless animals, a lot of rescue animals, a lot of shelter animals. I get that a lot on my social media feed. It depends on what you're watching. So obviously, Lanice, you watching ratchet shit because you've seen it on your social media. Now, as far as television, well, it's because you clicked on it. Okay, that's why you motherfucking clicked on it. So you can't get mad at what you're watching because you fucking clicked on it. And as far as who you're teaching, let's just be mindful that these are teenagers. And sometimes they do do the bare minimum because they're kids still. And that's where your job comes in as a fucking teacher to educate them and to point them in the right direction. Not to disrespect them and not to disrespect their mother or anybody in their family. So what? Young girls are wearing wigs to school. When I was growing up, that wasn't a thing. It was wigs, okay? But wigs are popular now. So what's popular and trending is what's going you're going to see up. Can't get mad with that. So what? They wear makeup. Who fucking cares? People been wearing makeup since God knows and who can remember, okay? Back in the George Washington days, they was wearing motherfucking makeup. Might not have had a nice selection like we do now, but they was wearing makeup then too. So let's just be for real, okay? People during Jesus times was wearing makeup, all right? They was, crush they was crushing them berries and putting them on their lips as lipstick. Let's just be for real, okay? So these things, we really can't get past. And as far as people getting their body done, people been getting their body done forever now, okay? God knows when. Whenever they started doing plastic surgery is when people started doing their bodies. And before then, when they didn't have that shit, they was putting on fucking corsets and having like 10 people pour them shits until you can't breathe, okay? Because they could, that's how they was doing their bodies. So let's just be for real. Ain't nothing really changed. Shit has just evolved. And people's attitudes might not have changed. They just evolved. But these are kids. These are kids in school. Let's remember that. They is kids in school and they need to be taught. So when they come to school with the very bare minimum work done, this is when you need to educate them and point them in the right direction. Send a letter home. Send an email. Okay. Send a text message to their parent. If their parent is ratchet to you on the phone, then that's when you send a letter or an email if you don't really want to verbally speak to them. When you see them in person, face to face, I can only imagine, Lonnie's. Because you already got it in your mind that these people are ratchet. So when you see somebody in person come into your classroom with a nice ass wig on or whatever, you probably already got it in your mind that these people are ratchet. And the way you treat them or the way that you acknowledge them is the same way that they're going to repeat. They're going to treat you and acknowledge you. I foresee Lani standing there when a mother comes in the classroom with a wig and this is her. She probably got like one of them resting bitch faces. As soon as she sends someone with a wig or weave, a parent, she got one of them resting bitch faces. And people could read you. They could read the look on your face. They could read your body language. You know what I'm saying? I don't really think that it's proper of you to say that all women wearing wigs or where women wear makeup or such are dysfunctional or uneducated or ratchet. 
and unruly because I'm reading this. I don't think that that's fair to women that are not like that. Now, granted, there are ratchet women out in the world. Shit, ratchet women don't got to wear no motherfucking wig. Some some women that be acting ratchet got the most prettiest hair and they just be acting ratchet. That's just their personality, okay? So you can't uh, you can't categorize everybody that wears a wig as a hair hat wearer, uh, makeup wearer, um, uneducated ratchet person. You can't do that. That's not fair to people. And actually, Larnice, I think that you need to have someone educate you on mannerism because yours is off the chain. And I really didn't care for your email too much. It was very disrespectful. I don't give a fuck who you teach. Okay. You don't tell me to call you miss. Let me tell you this much. Okay. Because people fail to realize this. And I've already said this, but I've never said this in the video, but I said this in, in real life person. Well, this is real life, but in person, I'm 50 years old. Okay. Of course you're going to fucking respect me. I'm 50 years old. Of course, I'm going to say what the fuck I want to say and not bite my tongue, okay? I'm a half a century years old. Bitch, I don't I don't have to call you miss or anything if you are below me in age. Now, you 40. I'm 50, okay? Um, She said, you can call me Miss Johnson. Your name is Lanice, and I'm not one of your motherfucking pupils, students, or anything like that in school. And when you address me, it's Miss April from here on out. Better yet, you don't even have to address me because you can unsubscribe to me. Whatever your username handle is on YouTube, you can unsubscribe because your email was real disrespectful, uneducated, unruly, and seemed like you was a little bit jealous, okay? Now, you can take that to the bank and cash that motherfucking check because I'm done with this email, period, okay? That's how I thought about her email. It was very disrespectful, and I just really felt like, don't address people like that. Don't say that because... You get the wrong one. You get the right one, okay? And they're going to address you. Women that wear accessories, because I think everything that she named was an accessory to me, okay? I think that wearing a wig is an accessory. It's just like wearing jewelry. It's an accessory. Just like men wear wigs. Yeah, they wear them too, toupees or whatever. It's an accessory. It's an enhancement, okay? And it's sad that a lot of people do think this way about women that wear wigs, you know what I'm saying, or makeup or get their bodies done. They they think like the worst a lot of times. They, they think like, you know, oh, when you wear wigs that you're ratchet or you're uneducated. And that's not cool to feel like that. Let's not all categorize every woman as this type of person. You know what I'm saying? It's sad. And I don't know if it's social media that does that or if it's just the person in general that's just miserable. Okay. But I don't really like miserable ass people. Okay. I don't. I don't. Now, judging people is one thing. And I feel like that was like a big judge on her part. You know what I'm saying? It just really, really was. And when I read it, when I read the email, I was kind of pissed. But then I had to kind of like get myself back in order because I, I did get pissed when I read the email the first time. And then I had to snap back like, girl, she'll know you. She'll know you from a hole in the wall. From what she sees is what she sees. She don't know you. And I don't know if you were calling me ratchet. She said, you want to ask me because I'm the wig guru and I wear wigs. Okay, listen, let me tell you, I'm not a ratchet person. And if I was, so fucking what? But I'm never a disrespectful person, okay? I'm never a disrespectful person. And I just hate when people stereotype people all the time. Like, don't do that. We as black people don't like being stereotyped because we've been stereotyped all our life. And it's sad because you think that because one black person does something, we all do it. OK, or let's not even use the race car. We'll just say women in general. One woman does it. All women do it. It's not cool. Just because one woman you saw that was ratchet and she wore a wig or, and had her body and fingernails done don't mean that all of them are ratchet. Okay. Women like to have nice things. Women like to upkeep themselves. It's called self-love. Okay. Give yourself some self-love, you know, <laughs> spend some time with yourself and pamper yourself. Just because you wear a wig don't mean that you ratchet shit. Some people got to wear a wig because they ain't got no motherfucking hair and they bald. So there might be cancer survivors. So they're ratchet too. Like, I, I don't know. Okay. Some people like to get their fingernails done. That doesn't mean they're ratchet. That means they like to pamper themselves and get their th and feet done. You know what I'm saying? People like, Lanice, get it together, girl. You know what I'm saying? Stop being so miserable. I don't know if you got a man or not, but if you ain't had no dick in a while, go get you some because it seems like that might be what you need. You just seem so miserable and just tight wadded and just like, I'm just, I'm just so miserable. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like some shit like that. Like, you know, I, I don't know. She's like one of those Debbie Downers. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I'm wearing a weave. I'm a weave wearer. I, and I've heard that before. Like, I've heard women say, well, I don't wear wigs, girl. I wear weaves. Like, you ain't no different. Bitch, don't act like you better because you wear a weave. That is no different. You got somebody else's hair on your head. It's all the same. Now, I'm not dissing none of that because, you know, a bitch will put on a ponytail and a wig in a minute. Okay? Like she said, I'm the wig guru. But just because you wear a weave don't make you no better than a wig wearer. Okay? Let's just be for real on that. I will say this, though. At least when wearing a wig, I could just take that shit off every day. You can't take that weave out every day now, can you? 
Anyway, we're going to move on to the next real talk, okay? I am so... Uh, I was going to say it, but I got a sandwich right here and some, some cherries. I'm so hungry. I am. I'm really, really, like, hungry. Okay. Real talk. Hey, Miss April. Hey, Miss April. Thank you so much for reading my email. My name is Kelly, and I am so confused in what I should do about this relationship. I found myself entertaining. So I have been dating, not even a committed relationship, but we have went out in several on several dates. I met this guy through a friend. He actually works with one of my homegirls at the salon where I go to get my hair done. He is a barber. So my friend hooked us up on a date. Basically, all three of us went out one night, and he and I seemed to hit things off. He was very engaging in conversation and was so funny. And I love a good sense of humor. I love to laugh, smile, and just enjoy my life. So my friend asked me the next day, would it be okay to send his phone number as he would like to get to know me? I said yes. She texted me his number, and I told her she could give him mine as well. We go out on several dates, he and I, and the first two dates were amazing. First one was at a local carnival, which was so much fun. Second one, we, we went fishing, which was also a lot of fun. The third date, he claimed was a surprise, and I went along with it. So he came, he picked me up, told me he was going to a cookout. I was very hesitant about this, but said nothing. I really don't eat other people's cooking that I don't know. Like, I can go to a restaurant, but not to a person's house that I don't know and eat. I just don't know their cleansiness. So to get right to the point, Miss April, we get to this cookout, which lo and behold, it's his ex-wife. She's the one having this cookout, and they have two kids together. He brought me to meet his ex-wife and kids. Miss April, when I tell you I was so uncomfortable, this was so awkward and just uncomfortable. I spoke to I spoke to everyone at the cookout, of course. When I finally had a private moment with him, I asked, why did he bring me here for a date? His response to me was, if I want to date him, I have to get to know his kids. And if I want to get to know his kids, I'm going to need to meet his ex-wife since she doesn't like just anyone being around their kids. I smiled and nodded at him and said, okay, great. He walked away for a brief moment, and once he walked away, I then unlocked my phone and used my Lyft app and used my Lyft app to lift my ass on home. When my ride was three minutes away, I excused myself to the bathroom, but I actually left out the front door and got in my ride. Of course, he texted me asking me where I was. I ignored his messages. I ignored his messages for days. I even spoke to my friend about it, who works with him. She said he's weird like that. He gives too much of his life info out and should have spoke to me first before putting me in an uncomfortable situation like that. She did tell him how he was wrong for what he did, and he's been trying to apologize to me and offer me a redo of the date to somewhere of my choice, but I don't know if I want to go out on any more dates with him. For... For one, he never told me he had kids. I didn't know he didn't even tell me he had an ex-wife. I didn't know he was even married. So I'm not sure I want to deal with anyone like that. What's your opinion? Please, thank you so much. I hope your day is beautiful. What did she say her name was? Kelly. So as y'all guys see, she didn't say how old she was. It don't even matter. Okay, because the whole date was, <laughs> this is crazy. So Kelly then went out. She met, we're going to call him Bob. Okay, Kelly then met Bob through her car to a mutual friend, you know what I'm saying? They both work, they both know the same person. One of her homegirls where she goes and gets her hair done. They all went out just as just to hang out, all three of them. And then they all had a great time. They exchanged numbers, they went on dates. The first date was at a carnival, which was great. And the second date was fishing, which was fun. Sounds like a good time, right? Like it's better than sitting at a restaurant all the time in a movie. I, I like the whole concept of going out and going to a carnival because I like a good carnival. I don't get on rides, but I like the food at the carnivals. I like to walk around and eat. That's me being a fat back, okay? Or a big back or whatever you call it. But so the third date, he said he was going to surprise her. And then when he picked her up, he told her he was taking her to a cookout. Now, first of all, every time you go to a cookout, that's either family or really close friends. We all know that. A cookout is like family or friends, okay? And I don't really think like a third date is kind of okay for that just yet. Like, I don't really want to meet your family on like the third date. But damn near, I damn for sure I don't want to meet your ex-wife and your kids on the third date. Like, nah, we're not about to do that. So she did she really, she did really leave in a lift. Like, excused herself to the bathroom and left in a lift. Now, mind you, had it been me and you told me we was going to a cookout on the first day, I probably would have said I'm not going because that's just me. I'm a very, very like, OK, I just I don't know. I, I don't I don't even like to go to my own family reunions. OK, and I'm being for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just don't. And it has nothing to do with my family. I just be feeling awkward and out of place. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like more of a I like to be at home type of person. So if you was to invite me to a cookout, 
I probably wouldn't go. Now, I went to a cookout last year with my so-called ex-friend and it was for her family. And each person had to bring a dish. And now, mind you, on the way to the cookout, she told me that the one girl, one of the family members was like, why did I invite her? Why did you invite her? She better be bringing something. Like, why did you even tell me that? We, she told me that we was like 10 minutes away, driving already. I was like, I want to go home. I want to go home. Why did you just now tell me this? I made sure to bring something because we had to stop off and they needed ice. So I bought bags of ice. But when I first got there, like, I did feel like one of the people there, like, looking at me really hard. Um, this one girl, she, um, she just was giving me this like death of stare and I, I was giving a death of stare back too, because it was very disrespectful and I wasn't trying to be disrespectful in anybody's home, but the greeting was very uncomfortable at first for me. And I was really trying to get out of my shell a lot, you know what I'm saying? And do other things that I really don't normally do. And so that was a very awkward moment for me, but the girl kind of did warm up to me and I warmed up to her and we was, we became very talkative. But when I first initially met this one particular family member of hers, she just gave me this nasty look, like really nasty look and didn't want to say hello. And when I go in anyone's home, I say hello loud and clear so everybody can see me and, and, and know that I spoke, you know what I'm saying? Not see me, excuse me, but know that I spoke. So when I walk into your home, hi, hi everyone, how's it going? And hope, you know that's me. I do that when I go into an establishment too. It's just it's just manners. That's just how, that's just me. But if we were going on a date, I would never want to bring anybody on a date at to a cookout. But did do bring her to a cookout with his ex wife? You know something? Now she's asking me should she go on another date with him? Like I don't really know. I, this one, if it were me, I'm gonna just say this. If that were me, that were I, I wouldn't. And she even said at the bottom at the end of the email, she did say. For one, he never told me he had kids. I didn't know. He didn't even tell me he had an ex-wife. I didn't know he was even married. So I'm not sure I want to deal with anyone like that. Um, and she did say above that, um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go out on any more dates with him. So when you feel that way about anything in life, it don't even have to be a date. But when you feel like, I don't know, I don't know if I want to go out on a date with him and you're not sure, then that means that you shouldn't. That is like a part of you is telling you like, no, girl. Don't go out with him. Maybe he's a red flag. If he made you feel uncomfortable, why put yourself in that predicament again? Now, it's one thing to meet family members. Like, say he took her to a cookout and it was his family, like his mother, his father, his family, okay? Then it maybe not felt so uncomfortable. It maybe not have would have been so uncomfortable. But he took her to a cookout with his ex-wife's family. That's real uncomfortable. So you mean to tell me... You got me here meeting your ex-wife, somebody you used to fuck, and now you want me to be around? You want to, you want her to meet the person that you might be fucking? Like, nah, we're not about to do that. I get that people don't want just anybody around their children. That's very, very, very common. I get that, okay? It's very, I respect that. But me meeting them at a cookout with a whole bunch of other family members around, that's an awkward, awkward situation. It's one thing, like, if he would have brought her to meet his wife with a heads up, Okay, just his wife, his ex-wife and the kids, that's a difference. But you brought her to your ex-wife's place and your ex-wife's family. That's real awkward. Okay? That's just motherfucking awkward. It's like, did you set me up for some shit? Like straight up. What we got going on over here? And it's fucked up that she had to excuse herself to the bathroom and then sneak out the motherfucking front door. Me personally, I tell you what I would have did. I would have just left. Once I found out it would have been his wife, I'd have been it's really nice meeting you, but I have to go. And I would let him know, you can either bring me back home or I can call a lift. Either way. And nigga, you don't never got to apologize. Because first of all, why apologize for something that you did on purpose? Like, I'm for real. Like, you, you did this on purpose. You told her that the third date was a surprise. What did he tell her? The third date he claimed was a surprise. And I went along with it. That sure was a motherfucking surprise. Because if you bring me to one of your ex's house unknowingly, that's a surprise. I'm surprised you brought me the fuck here. I'm surprised you think I'm that bitch. I'm surprised you even would put April in that situation. Nigga, I'm surprised you even want to lose your life today by putting me in this situation right here. That's that's the surprise, okay? My, my thing is this. It's great that you had a good time with him with the carnival and the fishing. That's great. But the awkwardness of going to a cookout that's not even his own family, is really awkwardness. And me personally, I wouldn't even go out on another date with him. That's just me. That's me personally. Not saying that that's you, but I feel like Kelly doesn't really know. She's not really sure. She doesn't know she wants to go out on another date with him. She also was not aware that he had children and an ex-wife. And listen, if you've been out on several dates already, I think like, okay, they've been out on 
two dates, the carnival. Yeah, we're having a great time. The carnival, it is loud. There's music and so forth playing and there's people gathering around and it's a great time. That might not have been a place to say, hey, I got kids and an ex-wife. Now you went on a fishing. Y'all went fishing. I think like when he took her fishing, that was the perfect time to tell her. You know why? Because when you go fishing, it's always quiet. You have to make sure that there's no loud music or else you ain't catching no fish. So I think that the fishing would have been first the best time to tell her, like, hey, I have children and I have an ex-wife. However, me personally, I think that the best time to tell the person that you have children or an ex-wife would have been the first time that or second time that you spoke with them. Now, when I say the first or second time that you spoke to them, because you guys made plans to meet up. You guys made plans to meet at the carnival. Y'all were interacting with one another, whether it be a text message or verbally, y'all were interacting to make these plans of going to the carnival or going to the fishing. And therefore, there was ample enough time while you were making these plans to bring up the situation or the fact that you have kids and you have an ex-wife. That was the perfect time. Now, you have to allow people to make the decision of who they want to meet. You cannot just throw somebody out there. Now, once he gave her that that, that information about having children already and having an ex-wife, he could have then allowed her to make the decision of, well, do I deal with him or not anymore? Okay. Now, if he didn't tell her after during the carnival or before the carnival, like I said, perfect timing would have been to do it when it was fishing or before the fishing. Okay. Granted, he didn't tell her during the carnival. He didn't even tell her before the carnival. Some do, some people do like to keep some of their information private. Okay. Sometimes we don't want to spill out all the beans. You know what I'm saying? A first date is a first date. That doesn't mean we together. Doesn't mean that we a couple. Doesn't mean we about to get married. It's a first date. We still getting to know one another. And maybe on that first date, I don't want to tell you that because maybe I don't want to have another date with you. So therefore, if I feel like that first date didn't go well, you didn't need to know about my information about my kids and my ex-wife because we're not going to go any further. So I get that with the first date, but definitely the second date. And while y'all were fishing would have been a perfect timing for him to tell her that he got some kids and an ex-wife. Okay. And then he also could have told her then, well, listen, I would love for you to meet my kids at a time when it's comfortable for you. Once we get to know each other better, third date is not a good time to meet his kids and his ex-wife. Cause y'all really don't know each other like that. I don't give a fuck how long y'all been speaking to each other on the phone. Y'all not in person. A second date, a third date is not a good date to get to meet other people's families. No, because you're still dating. You really don't get to know the person yet. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going to bring you around my kids after no third date. That don't mean we fucking. That don't mean we together. That don't mean we about to get married. That don't mean none of that shit. That means that I'm tolerating your fucking ass and I gave you another date because I'm tolerating you and I'm still getting to know you. Now, once we date in, date in, we in a relationship and we have, you know, both sat down and, and said, this is what it is. Then maybe I'll get to, you'll get to know and meet my kids. Of course, I would tell you beforehand that I have children. I'm not telling you on the first date. I might not tell you on the second, but I'm going to tell you before I bring you around to meet the motherfuckers. Okay. I'm going to give you the satisfaction and the option to say, well, okay, I would like to meet them now. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like you just don't pull somebody in like that. Like, hell no, I wouldn't give him another fucking date. Just like your friend said, he gives out too much of his life information. Well, he didn't give it out enough because had he gave it out enough, then she would have knew that he got some kids. She would have knew that he had an ex-wife and she would have knew that they was going on their way over there to a motherfucking cookout. And I feel you on that one part of, I don't eat everybody's food because I don't know their cleansiness. She didn't know this lady from a hole in the fucking wall. She didn't even know this lady existed. So for her to go to that's so fucking awkward. Like, okay, so it's one thing you brought me to meet this lady, but now you want me to sit down at her house, get real comfortable and eat her motherfucking cooking. That bitch could have put anything in the food. She could have just not, she could have not even been clean. She never said how cleansy, she never said how clean a woman was. And, and that wasn't even the moral of the story, but it's crazy how some people really just don't think. And I get it. You want to share your life with people, but honey, there's a way to go about it. So Kelly, in my opinion, this would be me. I wouldn't go out on another date with him. Fuck the carnival. Yeah, the carnival is fun, but you can have fun with your homegirls at the carnival. That ain't shit. That ain't shit. Okay, and go fishing. Bitch, you can find somebody to go fishing with if you really want to go fishing. I'm just saying. But nah, that whole... Could you imagine pulling up to the cookout and you thinking that it's his family? Because we already think that... Why would you think that, oh, he bringing me to somebody to his ex's house. Nobody ever going to think that he's bringing me to his ex's house for a cookout. You're going to think that's his family. And then when you go inside and you realize, well, this is my ex-wife. Oh, okay. Is your ex-wife here at your family's cookout? Oh no, it's her cookout. Yo, I would have walked out so quick. I would have walked out. I would have said, nice meeting you. And I would have left. I would have left. And I don't give a fuck where we was at. I would have walked to the corner and called the lift or the 
text to deliver, whatever you do, pull that shit up, give me a ride home. And I would have stood right there in front of somebody else's house just waiting for my ride. I surely would have. I would not have put myself in no type of situation like that. This is what I be talking about. I don't like awkward situations. I don't like uncomfortable situations. I'm an introverted person, like literally an introverted person. And it takes me a lot of, sometimes I got to build my fucking courage up for certain shit. And like I said, I don't do cookouts. I don't do family reunions. I just don't because I'm a very introverted person and I just don't communicate well. And I don't like to be in a lot of, well, I communicate well, but I don't like to be put in a big crowd of people in any awkward situation. It just makes me feel very uncomfortable and awkward. So I just don't. And if you was to tell me that we're going to a cookout, I would have said you could turn around right now. I'm not going to anybody's cookout. I just don't. But I think like giving that person a heads up or what the date is or what it entails would be perfect. That that was no surprise. That was a surprise, but it wasn't a good surprise. Kelly, I really think like, you know what? It's great that you, you had a good time at the carnival. It's great that you had a good time at fishing with him. But maybe I think for him, I think that it would be best for you to just leave that relationship as a friendship like you and your homegirl and him y'all can go hang out as a threesome and, and you know have drinks and when I say threesome I don't mean nothing kinky but you know what I'm saying like hang out as friends and get drinks and have a good time but to date him and like you said you weren't aware that he had an ex-wife or kids and from the thing that from the way it sounds I don't think she has any children of her own so I really and not not saying that you don't have to date anybody that has children because there's nothing wrong with that but just to be put in an uncomfortable situation like right off the back was very disrespectful. In my opinion, was very disrespectful. And I get that your ex-wife doesn't want any, just anyone around your children. That's cool. But after three dates, she's still just anyone to me. Like after three dates, you still really don't know that person. So you're still just having just anyone around your children. Like after three dates, she's still, Kelly is still just anyone. And it wasn't the proper time to introduce her to his wife, his ex-wife or his ex-wife's family or his ex-wife and his kids. That's not the proper time because three dates, Kelly is still just anyone. People can tell you anything. They can tell you the sky is fucking green and you might believe it, but people can tell you anything under the sun. People tell you shit that they think you want to hear just to get in good with you. And after three dates, there's not enough time to say, oh, this person is great. I want them to meet my kids. Hell fucking no. You crazy. I wouldn't bring people around my kids after three dates. Hell fucking no. Mm -mm. Let me tell y'all. When I have met guys and they, I've given them my number, they will ask me where I live at. I'm not telling you where I live. I, I just don't because I don't think it's your business. And I don't tell you who lives with me. I don't do any of that because it's not your business. On top of that, you might not even know if I really want to talk to you again. I will ghost the motherfucker real quick. And that's just me. I, 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 I do ghost guys a lot. You know what I'm saying? After like two text messages and you start sending me emojis with kissy faces and shit, I'm ghosting you for sure. If you ask me where I live at or certain things that you say to me, I'm ghosting you for sure because I, I've already been there and done that and I'm not going to allow you to, to come in and destroy my peace, okay? I'm not letting anybody fucking destroy my peace for that, okay? And I just feel like after three dates, it's definitely still a person who's just anyone. You don't know that person. And I really don't think she should have been at his ex-wife's house after three fucking dates. Like, girl, no. I don't know why he's moving so fast, but you know what? Girl, let him just swipe to the left and keep it pushing. If y'all want to hang out as friends with you and your homegirl, then do that. But I wouldn't give him another date. Let him apologize. That's great. The apology is accepted. You know, you can always accept the apology. You just don't forget. And I really don't feel like what he did was cool. Like, that wasn't a surprise. That, to me, was very disrespectful. You don't do that to people. I don't like to be put in any awkward situation ever, ever. Okay? That's just me in a nutshell. I don't like being put in any awkward situation. And that right there, I would have told you to turn the car around. I would have demanded that you turn the car around once I found out that you was going to a cookout. It didn't matter whose fucking cookout it was. Your family or your ex-wife's family. When you said cookout, I already knew. Oh, you're going to turn the car around because this is not the date that I want. Don't be a cheap ass. Take me somewhere where we can eat. For real. Like straight up. No, I'm not about to sit in nobody's fucking. No. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Kelly, there are a lot of good men out there. Okay. He might not have been the one for you. I don't think he was. And maybe he didn't have no ill intentions about it. Or, but the way he went about it wasn't very well thought out. And that might just be a mistake that he's just going to have to live with. But me personally, I wouldn't date him again, especially because you didn't know about the ex-wife and you didn't know about the children. And on top of that, I don't like walking into something that I'm not aware of what's really going to happen. Like, I don't I don't mind a good surprise. Who doesn't love a good surprise? But I don't like I don't like surprises like that. So I really think like, you know, what I'm saying if you're not sure, like you said, I don't know if I want to go out on a date with him, then that's your brain 
telling you it's not a good idea. And sometimes your mind will tell you shit that's not that that that's protecting you from unsafe shit. Okay, unsafe shit. And me personally, I felt like that was an unsafe situation. <laughs> and I say that because anything could have happened. Anything could have transpired at that cookout. Like straight up. Anything could have transpired at that cookout. His ex-wife and his ex-wife's family. You know, there's always a ratchet person, like 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 Lanice would say. There's always a ratchet person in anybody's family. You know, there's always somebody in the family who's ready to set it off, okay? Like straight up. So anything could have happened. Anything could have transpired at that cookout. His ex-wife's sister, if she had one, or cousin, or aunt, or mother, could have been looking at like at looking at Kelly like, why is this bitch here? You know what I'm saying? That's how I probably would have looked at her like, why he brought her? Why did he bring her to the to the to the cookout? That's how I would have looked as a mother of the ex wife. That's how I would have looked at Kelly. Like, why the fuck he got this bitch here in my in, in the backyard? Why the fuck did he bring her? That that's what a family members are gonna say. I guarantee you that them family members, some of them family members were like, Why who is this? Oh, that's his new date. Why is she here? Oh, did you see? Did you see Bob? He brought he brought this girl. He brought his new girlfriend to the cookout. You seen her? Then everybody's looking and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm pretty sure that transpired at the cookout. I'm pretty sure that somebody asked, who did Bob bring? Who's this with Bob? And then somebody was like, oh, that's his new girlfriend. Did you see this Bob's new girlfriend? He brought his new girlfriend today. That's how it transpires. So anything could have happened to Kelly at that fucking bar uh, barbecue. And Bob might not have been able to save her ass. Okay? Because that ain't his family. That's his ex-wife. He brought her to his ex-wife's house. Okay? Yeah, no, that was very disrespectful and very awkward and very unsettling. Oh, yeah, I would have left, too. You did the right thing by leaving. Sorry that you had to go through that, but I wouldn't put myself in another situation with him because God knows what the next surprise is going to be. And maybe hopefully he knows for future references not to ever do this again to anybody else. But I feel like three dates is definitely not enough to get to meet somebody's ex-wife and their kids. You still don't even know the person. And you never take anybody out on a date like that and don't let them know in advance. That way you give the person an option to say yes or fucking no. Period. So on that note, you guys, let Kelly know what you would think and what you think or what you would do in this situation. And also, you know, you can let Lanice know your thoughts on her email as well. Don't bully her, but just be nice. Okay. Just be nice. And make sure you check out Lashika Hollingsworth's book. I will link her link below. Along with that, I will link Made by Muff Accessories down below. Girl, y'all best to check them out because they got some really nice stuff, girl. But I love you guys. Thanks for staying tuned. I'm about to eat my sandwich and cherries and drink my good old water. Well, I am pinked out today. But I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious. You already know. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs the video up, and leave your comments below. And I will see y'all in the comments and in the next video.